Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here today to make your voices heard. There is much to be done here in Columbus to stop the bans, to protect women's health care, and to stop public dollars from being diverted to so-called crisis pregnancy centers that mislead women about their health. When a woman is pregnant and she doesn't want to be, she has a constitutional right not to be. That is a woman's personal decision. We don't walk in her shoes. We don't know her circumstances. And we should not substitute political judgment for sound medical judgment and her personal decision. The many bills that ban abortions at various stages amount to denying a woman her right to make her personal decision herself. These bills, like the many abortion restrictions that Ohio has enacted in recent years, make a safe and legal procedure less accessible and less safe. Abortion needs to remain safe and legal. Instead, women's lives are endangered by the careless political judgments that come out of this building. We need to stop the bans. The budget that we vote on in a couple of hours will end health care coverage for low-income women who become pregnant or who develop breast or cervical cancer. Essential coverage that is available today will end. Even though we are nearly dead last in the country for infant mortality, we are in fact dead last in African-American infant mortality, this budget will worsen that problem. We need to stop paying lip service to major problems like our shocking infant mortality rate and restore health care coverage to these women. Yeah. This budget will also divert limited federal funds away from needy families and towards so-called crisis pregnancy centers that shame, coerce, and judge women while withholding truthful information about their pregnancy options. This same harmful provision was put into the 2013 budget at the very last minute. And here is another money grab that hurts women and families in this budget. While you work to get your legislators to remove those two harmful budget provisions, I advise you all to be watchful that nothing more is added to this budget that attacks women's health and substitutes political judgment for medical judgment and a woman's personal decision. In 2013, the final two days of consideration under Governor Kasich's last budget gave us forced ultrasounds, a gag rule on rape crisis counselors, and other targeted abortion clinic restrictions. With no hearings and no opportunity for women to speak out, five restrictions on women's rights were added to the budget and signed by Governor Kasich. We must demand that no provision be snuck into the budget in such a cowardly fashion again. That's right. Yeah. 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 The work you all do here is so, so important. Your voices are needed, and I commend you for sharing them here today. Thank you all. And next we're going to announce, I know a hero to many of us, State Representative Teresa Better. Wow, that's so heartwarming. Love that. Thank you for being here and never, never leave us, right? <laughs> We're going to be by your side, shoulder to shoulder, until this issue is no more. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? We're going to be dealing with issues we really care about. Yeah. All day kindergarten, preschool, daycare. Yeah. How about equal pay? Yeah. You know, I've spoken out bluntly on the heartbeat bill, House Bill 169, which would ban abortion even in the case of rape and incest, and would criminalize a doctor who performed an abortion, charging him or her with a fifth-degree felony. 
This is so fundamentally inhumane and unconstitutional. It's the most extreme bill that I have seen come through this state house since I've been here 15 years. And it was so extreme that I couldn't sit any longer. I couldn't be silent any longer. And my philosophy in life, silence is defeat, right? We will no longer be silent. Women in politics should not have to compromise their privacy to speak with ultimate authority on this issue. Being the child bear alone is, should be enough. While abortion is an agonizing issue, most Americans feel that abortion is a private decision, and federal law upholds this. Our law enshrines a right to privacy. Therefore, we already have that right, we already have that freedom, and we're going to keep that freedom, right? Yeah. We've been getting great editorials throughout the state of Ohio in support of our efforts and really just speaking down on the extreme efforts and, the, quite frankly, the waste of time. Women, couples, and families, this is from the Toledo Blade, it sums it up well. Women, couples, and families have rights to privacy. Government is too blunt an instrument for policing personal decisions about life, death, morality, and belief. Did anybody ever remember the civil war this country went through? Absolutely, the same issues. Government has no business telling families when to end pregnancies caused by rape, or for that matter, when to discontinue life support for the dying. Yes, I want to live in a life-affirming society, but that includes life for the crack baby after he is born, or she is born, and life after the teenage girl who has been destroyed by her trafficker, abused by a family member. And the list goes on and on and on, especially with domestic violence in this country. It has to end. Where is the Right to Life movement for babies who have left the womb? That question has been asked and asked and asked again. And we must not stop asking that question, even as we are giving the speeches on the floor today about the budget. The budget is a moral document. This budget is not a moral document when it comes to life after you're born. I agree with Bill Clinton. In a good society, abortion should be legal and rare. But like the end of life decisions, abortion decisions should be private decisions. I wonder which male legislator voting in favor of this law in theory would in real life in time take his own daughter's freedom of choice, even though she would choose to have that freedom and exercise that right, deny her of that, and from her choice if she were raped. An agonizing choice for sure, but a choice, and not one that the state should make for individuals. The freedom to make these decisions are between women, their families, and loved ones, and God, not the government. Thank you.